Welcome back to Office Hours. I'm your host, Michael Wolf. Today in Office Hours, special appearance by the teacher's assistant, Mr. Tron Carter. Tron, welcome to Office Hours, your first appearance ever. It's so good to be here. I've disagreed with so many of the things that, that Professor Wolfie said this year. He's misrepresented me several times, especially on the logo one. I'm, you know, I can't wait to set the record straight and talk about one of my favorite things, clubhouses. I wanted to be an architect when I was a little kid. And so this is this is the culmination of, of a dream, Wolfie. Well, uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Uh, the floor is yours. We're gonna today we're gonna talk about our favorite clubhouses. These aren't the best. Uh, they're just our favorites, right? Style. This is a very stylistic thing. It's a very opinion thing. Uh, there's not a best. There's not a worst. Maybe there's some worst. But uh, we're just going to talk about our favorites and specifically why uh, they're our favorites. So, Mr. Carter, the uh, the floor is yours. Are we doing top five? And I think we'll all, let's alternate. One? Yeah, okay. let's alternate. We'll start from the bottom, work our way up. So, give me uh, okay. give me your uh, your number five. So, so I have a tie for fifth. I have a three way tie for fifth. Of course. Of course, Solly warned me that this might happen. <laughs> couldn't couldn't narrow it down. It's like choosing your favorite kid. Can't do sure. it, right? Um, so fifth I, is... I've got a favorite kid, by the way. That's an easy question for me. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Uh, favorite is, you know, it's, it's classic. Feels distinctly American, distinctly understated. Kind of like this, this hoodie I'm wearing, to be honest, which we can, we can get to this hoodie after the fact. But... Um, I've got Shore Acres, Myopia, and Valley Club all, all tied for fifth. They're just okay. wonderful places. We've got East, Midwest, West covered. It's, it's uh, you know, I love Myopia, one of the kind of the cradles of, you know, New England golf. Great uh, bar room in the middle there. Great veranda, great setting in the fall. Nowhere I'd rather be in the fall. Uh, Shore Acres, only been there once and just was absolutely smitten. Never never been to a club that was more composed and uh, quietly confident in itself without being arrogant. And I thought the clubhouse completely matched that. I love the little pro shop in there. Um, and then Valley Club, there's nowhere that I'd rather uh, sit on the back porch and drink a margarita. It's just everything's so proportional and it just feels so inherently Santa Barbara. So. Yeah, it does. That's a, I, I like that one. I like the painting that they have of uh, yeah. Alistair McKenzie in the little uh, sitting area with the two couches. We'll put a we'll put a photo of that up right now that everybody can see. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. Pretty good temperatures there too for uh, year round enjoyment of that clubhouse. Pretty good. And and Oprah right. might swing by. You never know. So she lives right down the yeah, street. Yeah, or so. or Harry and Meghan, right? Or Harry or and Meghan, right? <laughs> right down the street. Sure. All right. Well, my, mine's uh, my number five. I'm going to go I'm going to go to the, the, the far east and I'm going to go to an, up into the mountains. Uh, Nasu, uh, N-A-S-U. Wow. Nasu, most people probably haven't heard of, but it's it's kind of as it was explained to me, it's kind of the seminal of Japan. So all the guys from uh, Hirono and Tokyo Golf and, and, and uh, all those types of places, Nasu is where they go in the summertime to escape from the heat. So it's kind of the opposite of Seminole as far as all these guys that are all these other great places. They head up into the mountains uh, to get away from the heat and humidity. For, for the people that don't know, Tokyo is actually about the same climate as uh, Atlanta is. It's a, it can be a hot, sweaty place, and obviously it's pretty crowded. So these guys, they go up to Nasu. It's way, way up. It borders a national park, and it's, uh, it's also where the, uh, the emperor of Japan um, and, and the royal family, I guess you would call them uh, to this day. Uh, it's where they're like uh, they're uh, they're like Camp David or their uh, you know summer oh. retreat, the summer palaces. He played golf there. I'll put a picture of him teeing off right now. In this place, it, it's like playing golf, uh, you know, in a Arcadia or uh, somewhere like that. I mean, it's just on the edge of civilization. It feels like a couple other specific things I like about it. Uh, the, the clubhouse structure itself isn't isn't so beautiful or like classical architecture or anything like that. It's sure he's functional, but they've got a dormy house and the dormy house has an onsen tub and it's a real one. So it's outside. It smells like sulfur. It's scalding hot. Uh, this is not a fancy, you know, bathtub with marble and all that stuff. This is you're sitting in just a pool of bubbling water outside. That's a little bit stinky, but man, it feels good. Uh, the temperature because you're in the mountains, it always falls at night. So it's really good. 
I also like their drinking fountains there. They have these. I'll show a picture of that right now, too. I love and, a good and, drinking fountain. Yeah. And this is like, it's just a spring water that still bubbles up. And you just use this little cup. Everybody shares the little cup. I like that part of it on the, on the little stick. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Bonus points also uh, for these guys that, um, I think it was Tom Doak maybe that said, you know, show me a, a great clubhouse that sits on a hill with a magnificent view. And I'll show you a really, really hard uphill 18th hole. Um, and, and so I like places like Nasu, uh, Kanapali is another one where the, um, or, or Kapalua is another one where the clubhouse is at the bottom of the hill instead of the top. And I, and I like that. Uh, you know, you don't get the views, but I do like uh, how you kind of see it as you're coming home, as you're coming down the 18th hole or you're coming down the ninth hole and you see it at the bottom there. I kind of like that if, if you can, the, the architects that were brave enough to do it and figured out how to do it, um, they saved kind of the best views for the golf holes and they put the clubhouse at the bottom. And it's, uh, I, I like playing a downhill uh, 18th hole. Not not too many kind downhill of, 18th holes. Kind of the opposite of Shore Acres as far as, you know, like that's, there's no hints of the lake until you get to the clubhouse there, you know, it's not on a hill or anything, but it's on a big bluff over the lake. Uh, that's one of the things I like about Valley club as well is it's not just about the 18th hole. You've got that, that loop there. Yeah. You know, there's so many, like you could go out and play a three or four hole loop there right below the clubhouse and all that. Yeah. That's so, nice. Uh, right, Nisu, that sounds, that sounds very, uh, you know, Japanese seminal sounds like possibly the, the stuffiest, place on the planet i mean you know just all sorts of of customs i, I felt and, right at home i felt right at home my people <laughs> my people yeah can't wait to get back my next one's tara Edie. um it's awesome i mean it's it's indoor outdoor there's these sliding doors it's it's so understated it's small but or it's it's quaint without being small uh there's it just it feels like you're I don't know in suspended reality it's awesome it's sits above the seventh hole which is this little par four with the smallest green i've ever seen kind of sits on a on a hill but but not it's like a dunish thing um it, it's awesome i love it so much and the service and the furnishings and everything is just so in proportion what would be your ideal amount of time to spend at Terra Edy in the clubhouse? You know, what? how many days would you be there before you would think, you know, not a lot else to do here besides play golf? Uh, it would take me a couple weeks, I think. Uh, <laughs> really? Especially, a couple es weeks. especially okay. with uh, Thierry down, down the street as well now. You've got another brilliant clubhouse there with an awesome kind of detached restaurant and the whole putting green. And, dope course just opened up there so yeah it would it would take me probably at least two or three weeks okay all right my next one uh we're going to the opposite end uh of the uh of the ocean and that's uh that's mar del plata um it's uh mar del plata yeah. is a, is the name of a city but it's also the name of the club it's uh it's four or five hours depending on traffic uh south of uh down the coastline from buenos aires um, it is on the edge of what I would describe as like a beach town. Um, it's, it's, it's probably size wise, a little bit more like, uh, maybe not quite as big as Fort Lauderdale, but it's definitely got, it's got the high rises and everything right on the water. It's got this really cool Harbor where like the mil some military ships are and some old sailing ships and stuff like that. How, how far South of, 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 of BA are we talking about five hours by car? Five hours. Uh, so okay. it's, yeah, it's, uh, I, I want to say 300. 350 miles just to guess there but yeah it, it's a okay. it's a haul um it's straight down the coastline um and it's okay. so you pull into town the other thing that's cool is the way you come in from buenos aires you kind of drive through town and you see uh you know you see all the condos on the beach and everything and it's it's this white sand uh very uh gently sloping towards the water it'd be a nice place for to have a vacation uh house uh especially with a 700 to 1 exchange rate right now but um <laughs> It's really cool because you kind of go around the corner and you see a clubhouse that looks, we'll put a picture up of the clubhouse right here. And the clubhouse looks like, um, you know, looks like Hoy Lake. It looks like real, um, you know, it looks like um, Lithams. Um, oh, it's, you're speaking you know, my language, Wolf. Those are two old, of my favorites. Those are yeah, on my honorable you walk into, list. You walk into this thing and it's, I mean, they got the fireplaces. They got the fresco ceilings. It's just, you know, it's... Uh, just the workmanship that it took all the glass and the hand carved woodwork and everything they got the dormy rooms upstairs 
They got, uh, you can get a shave in the morning and they got little heaters at the shaving station to keep your toes warm while you're getting a shave by the barber in the, uh, in the bathroom. The food's unbelievable, but here's the real, uh, here, here's the real reason why it's number four on my list. So you walk out then, and at this point, you really haven't seen the golf course. You still feel like you're in a crowded city, like you're in a city club or something, and you walk onto this back veranda, and this is the view right here that you're greeted with. And it's it's just unbelievable. It, it's like if somebody Incredible. had built, I've used this example before, but it's like if somebody had built Rye or someone had built Barwin Heads or somebody had built National Golf Links of America in downtown Fort Lauderdale, uh, that's the feeling you get. I mean, it's just... You, you go from this crowded city on one block and then the front entrance of the clubhouse and then when you go out the back door of the clubhouse, you've got this view, you can see all 18 holes and it kind of slopes and it's, I've never seen a setting like that before where it's it's right between, you know, 60 story high rise buildings and a beautiful beach and it's just sandwiched in between. I mean, the land, I mean, it would just be, uh, I mean, it's priceless. Um, you know, I've never seen anything like that in a, in, it'd be like building a, a golf course in the middle of, uh, you know, Central Park in New York City. I mean, the land these days, I, I, it, it's amazing that they've, it probably speaks to the uh, the influence of the membership there, that, that uh, the place has survived and, and no politician has been able to seize mm. the land and, uh, you know, convert it. Because it's, I mean, it is yeah. prime real estate and the clubhouse is just uh, very fitting for that. It's a, it's a great old place. It's just fantastic. Wolfie, don't let, don't let Malcolm Gladwell find out about this place. Am I right? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. He'd have multifamily housing in a, in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right. What's, uh, uh, what you got? Next up for me is a place that I know is near and dear to you. Uh, Crystal Downs. Oh, yeah. Up in no Michigan. better place in the summer, uh, a week or two in the summer. That's for sure. That's and for it's sure. one of those places, too, where, you know, the golf course kind of occupies this great land. You've got, um, you've got this bay window that kind of overlooks the 10th tee. You look straight down the 10th hole. Okay. Uh, off to the side there that's just yep. i mean i like i could post up with a book there for six seven eight hours it's it's quaint there's a small little locker room there the pro shop it's it's you know it's a very very small small clubhouse but it it, it packs a punch it's up on this bluff up on the you know kind of the the big uh dune there and um just a just a wonderful place and and very much uh, embodies the spirit of the club, I think. It does. I I'm going to give you a five-point deduction there. Uh, that's not the clubhouse. That's the pro shop. Uh, there's oh. a clubhouse farther up on the hill behind the 18th hole. And that's super grand and super nice. Um, nobody ever actually uses that clubhouse. I, I think Crystal Downs' this clubhouse has got to be about the least used. It's, it's a great place to go for dinner with your family, like on Saturday night or, or for a wedding, stuff like that. But it's not open at all during the day. Um, you're right. Yeah. I mean, the, the, they have That's this, like the de facto clubhouse, right? It, it really mean. is. It, it, it is uh, for all intents. And, uh, I mean, I can see, you know, it, it definitely is because that's the, yeah. the pro shop is used uh, 10x what that clubhouse is. Well, and uh, the locker room is in this building. So like wherever the yeah. locker room is, that's kind of where I think the pro shop okay. is. Okay. Right? Uh, yeah. The other uh, little quirk about uh, Crystal Downs, just a little fun fact for folks, maybe not a fun fact for some people, no booze, no booze at the Crystal Downs. You can't buy beer there. Uh, it's just part of the tradition. They've got it up in the uh, clubhouse for dinners, but uh, yeah, uh, no beer at the turn at the, at the, at Crystal Downs. Free lemonade and iced tea, but uh, yeah. Also one of the no more unmerchable there. logos in golf. It's I'll, bad. uh. I'm a, uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Green, blue, the belt. Uh, that's yeah. Okay, we'll ha we're we're gonna have you on for part two of our uh, of our logos. Uh, parts we'll, we'll, parts two we'll, through seven. Yeah, we'll save that one for another time. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tron. Uh, speaking of merch, I got some new uh, stuff this weekend. You want to see it? I would love I to. In, oh, uh, the Lido. Yeah, I was up in Wisconsin. I uh, got to play the Lido for the first time. Uh, played it a couple times this weekend. Walked in the pro shop. What's What's in the front row? Holderness and Born. Um, picked up another one. This is the uh, this is the um, the Duncan shirt. White oh, the and Duncan. Nantucket. I don't know if you can see that. It's got little that's, darts. That's on the it. dart one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, it's, that's my everyday. It's the dart one. Here's what I'm. I, I was a little hesitant when the prints came out to get on the print bandwagon. Here's what I'm finding in the fall. I like a good print like this with the collars because H&B obviously has got these great collars. I like it under like a Ward, uh, my Ward sweater. I wear my Ward sweater, uh, you know, st you know, a solid color. And then I put yeah. the little print uh, collars underneath it. And all of a sudden I look, I look like a million bucks. 
I see. Uh, uh, I see. You've got a ward on there. You know what? I've got a Wallace on. This isn't even out yet, Wolfie. This what? is. This is coming. This is coming out. I don't even know. How T C of you? Could be a spring thing. Uh, it's it's basically a ward hoodie. Uh, it's finally, you know, time to wear pants and real clothing here in Jacksonville after five or six months of summer. So uh, I've been posted up in this thing. I've got, I've got the pants on right now as well. Um, and yeah, the print. I echo everything you said about the print polos. They're they're absolutely fantastic and, and taking yeah. over my my uh, closet. So yeah, I mean. H and B, uh, we've said this before. The collars, I mean, they're yeah. great when you're just wearing the shirt itself. But when you're wearing the shirt underneath a sweater or something, you don't want like the one collar in, one collar out. The collars are rolling up on you. You got bacon collars. Uh, this is when the, this is when the H and B uh, attention to detail really turns out. Is when you wear them underneath something like a ward because uh, they stay straight, and I like that. Yeah. I don't like uh, having to worry all day about one in, one out. What's going on? Nothing we'll worse see. than when you're like talking to somebody and then you walk away from the conversation and you realize the whole time you've been talking to him, you got like one collar in and one collar out the whole time. Wolfie, speaking of clubhouses, any clubhouse yet at, at, at the Lido or is it? Uh, well, they've got the pro shop and then they've got something that's operating as a clubhouse, but I think it's just one of like the um, homes that will eventually be sold and it's just being used as kind of a de facto um, clubhouse okay. um, right now. So plans in the works to build one there, I think. Next on my list, St. George's Hill uh, in the London Heathlands um, area. Um, we'll show a picture of it right now. Um, it's on the hill. Um, so for those that don't know anything about St. George's <laughs> or the background, um, this was it is the on first... the hill. Folks. It's on the hill. It's on top of the hill. Yeah. I think it's probably the highest point of the golf course. Maybe, maybe one of the back nine tees is higher, but anyway, um, St. George's Hill was the first golf course, first golf club that was designed as a real estate development. So the guy who developed it, um, it was, he bought a big section of land with the with the intent of routing the golf course and, and developing the home sites and selling a, a lifestyle, selling that you're going to you know buy a house out here, you're going to live right oh. by the course. The sad part of the story, so it goes well, he decides to try to do it again and the second place he tried to do it was at Wentworth and it didn't work and um, ran out of cash flow, went bankrupt, uh, the whole thing. So. Um, yeah, a, t a, t a tale as old as time, but it began at uh, St. George's Hill, which is uh, real estate developments. Get your money in, get your money out. Make sure your timing is good. Um, works out for Wentworth, some people, super, out. super understated clubhouse there. Am I right? Yeah, and, and two little things I like there. The Nelson Bell, I like that. And that, uh, again, that's kind of a nod to the membership of like, holy shit, how did they get a hold of a bell off of a you know, naval warship? Uh, you know, I like that. <laughs> Um, and I also like the pillars. So they have these pillars in the clubhouse that are like stone and then they like chisel into the stone, I guess, or put little plaques into them that uh, like commemorates favorite famous dates and famous achievements and uh, just milestones that, that happened since the, the founding of the club. And I like those little pillars they have by the stairway. So, okay, cool. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Sally's always raved about that place. Uh, the Heathland is, I feel like I, like most of the clubhouses there I'm, I'm going to like, right? Like I haven't yeah. played a whole lot of Heathland golf, but yeah. dying to get to Woking and, and, you know, love Woking is a great one. Yeah. Woking's got the um, back porch. Yeah. Um, I, I like Woking. I like courses like Woking where the clubhouses, um, they surprise you a little bit. So there's a green that's just steps away from the back porch, but it's not yeah. the 18th green. And, and I kind of like that part too. You know, the 18th green finishes to the side of the clubhouse. It's uh, I, I like courses where you, you know, the greens kind of go past the, and the running goes past the clubhouse multiple times. I, I uh, it gives you a little flexibility, like you said before, as far as getting out and playing a quick three or four holes. Uh, All right, what's my, next for you? my next one's Kingston Heath. I love, I love, love, love the course. I love the club. I love the clubhouse. Uh, it is just, it's this slow slung understated, building um white structure that's uh one story and there's a breezeway that kind of you know the the deep locker rooms off the breezeway there's a great um restaurant bar with big big windows there that that you know looks out on this wonderful majestic piece of property they have the southerly buster which is i think my favorite club cocktail in the world um they have the pro what, shop over on the other uh, it's what's like, it? that's a great question. It's like a vodka a or rum. What, what's the base? I think it's rum. Um, okay. I, I could be totally wrong though. It could be vodka. It's like a Moscow mule ish kind of thing. It's served okay. in a little, 
uh, copper mug and, and um, or like a little stainless mug. It's 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 fantastic. It's got all sorts of spices and cinnamon and cardamom and things of that nature. So, um, okay. but yeah, I don't know. I just it just matches the course so well. There's such a I love Kingston Heath. I think there's there's not many places in the world that squeeze as much out of such a small piece of land and use what's on the ground as well and uh, the way that it integrates in similarly like you know you kind of come back to the clubhouse um at multiple points during the round and and yeah it's just it's i think if i get play one course for the rest of my life it would probably be kings and heath and that wow. clubhouse is is it, it is a part of that as well okay so. i like in that clubhouse too they have um Above the uh, one of the mantles, they have all the uh, bottles of, uh, I think they're whiskey bottles. You make a hole in one, you get a drink out of it, and they put your name on the bottle. And then when it's empty, they, they get the next bottle out. So all the bottles are lined up, and they have these little names on each bottle of, uh, of who took the drink out of those bottles for uh, making the hole in one. And, and yeah. I like that. They're all lined up, and they go back years and years and years of all the uh, hole in one celebratory uh, uh, drinks. Um, I like that. And like generally speaking, I think the Australians get clubhouses mostly right. Right. They yeah. get it. You know, it's, it's a place to be convivial and have some beers after the round and everything. It's, it's, you know, uh, Royal Melbourne's a great clubhouse. Um, Victoria has got a great clubhouse. So for folks, uh, if you're, if you're thinking about going to Australia, if you're making the trip or first timers or anybody, a little, little, uh, tip for you, a little fun fact. So Victoria is one of the few, um, places I'm, it's got a dormy house and you can stay yeah. there, uh, even as a unaccompanied guest. So the move for an American, if you're flying over there, you're you know you're in the air for 17 hours or whatever, long travel day. Uh, if you're not flying, you know Delta One, like Tron is, um, you know, in your Polaris, uh, United Polaris. <laughs> when you land, when you land, uh, go to Victoria and play. Stay awake to readjust your time setting. So make your first course Victoria. It's it's a pretty easy uh, walk. It's a great introduction to um, Sandbelt Golf. And then you can stay right there. So, so you know, when you do hit the wall, whenever that is, if it's after nine holes or 18 holes or, you know, whenever it is, uh, you know, play Victoria first on your Australian vacation. And then you can spend the night right there in the uh, in the dormy house, right upstairs, sleep right upstairs. It's nice. Professor Wolfie, just, you know, yeah. leaving the students with some wisdom as they, I'm, as they venture out into the world. I love that. I'm here to help. Uh, my next one, kind of along the same lines, as far as it just feels like, an appropriate sized clubhouse for the course. I'm going to go to the dunes. Uh, Mike Kaiser's first uh, venture, a uh, little nine hole course. It, it's a cool, you know, nine hole course. Reminds me a little bit of Pine Valley uh, for sure. I think that was definitely some inspiration there, but the clubhouse is just this little white square structure uh, that we'll show a picture of here. And it's just very fitting. I mean, it's, it's, if you're driving out from Chicago and you just need a quick place to change your shoes or if uh, you know, it's, it's enough for you and three friends to have, you know, a Coke after the round, but it's not, you know, the overhead cost of this thing has got to be less than, you know, than it costs most places to, you know, just pay to have their places cleaned for a month or whatever. It's, it's just, uh, it's exactly what they need. No more, no less. Lots of attention to the detail, like the locker sizes, the, you know, just the little uh, hooks to hang a, a coat on or whatever. It's, I like everything about the Dunes Clubhouse. It, it can't, I, I don't know what the number is. It's a private club, but, uh, it, it can't be more than a, I don't know, a couple, 2,000, 1,500 square feet. It, it can't be more than 1,500 square feet of it. Like that. I, I've never played there. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, a, it's just a good fit. And I think that's the, that's the over, you know, one of the overarching things that, that you and I yeah. probably agree on, John, is that the clubhouse has got to fit the, uh, the scale of the course and vice versa, you know, and it's, uh, and, and the dunes, they did a good job with that. Yeah. The scale, like the scale and the aesthetic and just the spirit yeah. of the course too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the operating yeah. cost too. I mean, you don't want to get in a situation where, you know, the clubhouse is eating into the golf or, or, you know, or you've exactly. got a big grand, you see this a lot, you know, when you do international travel where you see a big grand clubhouse and, you know, maybe the financial model of the area has changed or the country or whatever, and they can't, now they can't pay to maintain it. And it's just, it's sad when you see, you know, like beautiful woodwork, uh, but, but it's all getting warped or, uh, you know, uh, tile work that's got grout in it because they just can't afford to keep the place clean or whatever. Uh, that, that's always a little bit sad too. When you see some, some older, yeah. uh, grand ones that are just not being maintained anymore. Don't build well, in the first you know, place. Uh, you know? Speaking of, of a place that's understated, 
uh, just very, very personable, very approachable. My my number one clubhouse is TPC Sawgrass. It's uh, <laughs> the, the the faux Tuscan villa. The Casa Come on, Tron, you're not dealing with the, this isn't your freshman. This isn't your freshman, you know, debate class. Come on. Who do you think uh, you're pulling here? No, no. Give I'm me the kidding. real one. Uh, that's one of the most opulent faux. Is Evo that your worst? Leash. Is that your no, least it's, favorite? Uh, it's up there. I think that West Lanx is up there as well. Uh, <laughs> you have, place, yeah, we've spoken I love the to golf those folks. But yeah. man, this has got off. Hold your letters. We've already got them. We know how you feel about the, your clubhouse. We understand you. you yeah. West Lanx yeah. gets a, a double thumbs down, not only because the current clubhouse, but they used to have a great one. I mean, their original one was a bit, it looked just like Liverpool's. It, it's, uh, you know, what happened there? I mean, I hope there was some structural issue or zoning or something. I hope somebody just didn't think like, hey, you know what we need to do? Tear this down and build this because what a mistake. It's like modern, yeah, it, like yeah. The, the bad, the bad, uh, uh, astroturf through the through the breezeway there it's it's awful um and by no, the way it's a really good golf course go there and play oh, it's golf it's, all, it's yeah. fantastic yeah. yeah maybe go no, into I, town for a drink afterwards yeah i would say my number one i'm gonna surprise you here uh this is a a public course uh every time i walk into this clubhouse and i i just it i feel zen like it's the setting the 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 hint of the ocean, Bandon trails. It's, it's so good. It's glass, like, it's this, kind of a... yeah, this Japanese kind of, you know, you almost feel like you're in a Japanese garden a little bit. The landscaping outside is wonderful. Um, there's a great couple of porches out there. You can have a post round beer. Everything is in proportion. It feels, it matches up with, with trails, the golf course remarkably well. The, the dining in there, I think that's the best dining at Bandon is in the Bandon hmm. Trails Clubhouse. What's uh, the move there? What's the, uh, what do you get? What's the, what's they, good? They changing the menu, but they always have some good fish dishes. They used to have this Asian Caesar salad that was just to die for. Uh, they usually always have a good ramen or a good, you know, kind of udon noodle bowl thing. Um, you know, open kitchen there. It, 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 uh, the uh, preserve is right there. That little pro shop that they have for preserve and trails, I think those are two of the the better logos, which we can get into at you know at Bandon at some point. But uh, I think the preserve logo is by far the best logo there. So it's like that stuff's on display. You've got um, you know small little bathroom and and it, it's just it sits kind of on this little bluff that you get a, a decent view at everything, yeah. but you don't get the full vista. It feels intimate. So I, okay. I love it. It just, it, it feels, it, it feels so distinctive and different from anything else out there. Okay. I didn't see that one coming. Good for you. All right. Uh, before I get to my best, I, I got to do my least favorite, I guess, uh, following along kind of the same lines with you. Uh, uh, what we were saying before about the maintenance stuff like that. So, so mine is, is back to Japan and it, it's Kiwana. Uh, Tron is a, is a former hotelier uh, your, yourself. Uh, you'll, I think you'll understand. Like it, it's, it's so bad. It's dirty. It smells, um, dirty is like the worst for a hotel, but beyond that is just like, it's old, like it hasn't been maintained, but beyond that, there's this like feeling of just like this, you know, it was grand, like this big fireplace in this lounge. There's nobody in it. Like the lights are off. Like I, I wandered around cause I was just, you know, I'm spending the night and it's incredibly expensive by the way. So all the above, I mean the pool, the water in the pool is like green, like, like, <laughs> They don't even give a shit. Like, it's just like, yeah, nobody's going to swim there anyway. It sounds so. like that stinky onsen you were talking about in your first one. Well, that's good smell. That's a different, you know, it's a, this is, it's just the whole place. Like the, the, the shower curtains and stuff and the, like the, uh, the vents, you know, with the dust and the vents do better, man. That place, that's like a, that's like a national, you know, heritage. I mean, that's like one of your crown jewels of your, of your golf, uh, which is, you know, one of the big sports over there. And it's just being uh it's, it's rotting away so f minus koana um my number one's gonna be shinnecock so um it's it's the first golf course uh, i mean first clubhouse ever built in the united states specifically for golf um stanford white it's just this classic place it stanford opened in, white <laughs> yeah april <laughs> well it opened in april 1892 we'll jump ahead to the fun fact tron do you know how stanford white died uh 
I don't. I don't. I was going to say something witty, but. <laughs> well, you might get close. So he was murdered on the, uh, he was murdered on the roof of Madison Square Gardens in 1906 <laughs> by the husband of the, uh, of the woman he was currently cheating with. So uh, their oh. affair was discovered. He was confronted at a, uh, I guess, a, uh, like a, a theatrical presentation or something that James, James Dolan got him <laughs> Yeah, up on the roof of Madison Square Garden shot him three times and that's uh, that was the old of old uh, Stanny White um, wow. but I like I, I do like uh, I do like uh, um, Shinnecock's um, clubhouse itself it's uh, you know it, it's very open and airy and obviously the days before air conditioning is why they used to put them up on hills and try to expose them that way the light it's def- it's also one of those places where like no matter where you are in the clubhouse you can see you know there's always windows and you can see out and it's got a good uh, kind of transition from in inside outside um, and it's just a grand you know I mean Shinnecock's one of the you know five founding members of USGA and it's a it, it's a clubhouse that, that fits that as well I mean it's been well preserved and taken care of over the years obviously and the the old clubs that are hanging in there the the artwork of uh, you know all the characters from that club's history and the, and, and really golf in the United States is reflected in the stuff hanging on the walls. And, uh, it's just job well done overall by, yeah. uh, by the folks there. So good stuff. Good stuff. It's Not the most comfortable place in the world, but, uh, you didn't feel comfortable there. I think those are your people. No, I mean, I didn't feel uncomfortable. I just didn't feel that, yeah. that comfortable. Very C sweetie so. there. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll say a clubhouse I was disappointed with, out on Long Island, Friars Head. I'd heard nothing but great things about this place. Gets all the details right. To me, it just it just didn't. Yeah, they have great water pressure, but like that place didn't feel distinctive at all inside the clubhouse. It looks really cool from the outside, but okay, it looks haunted. Like it's a little dark. Yeah. Like the outside of it yeah. is a little uh, like the uh... yeah. It's very moody. Let's go through some honorable mentions. I've got Pacific Grove in there i love the way that's just they got a great little restaurant in there the way it's kind of in town and everything i love that place winter park nine great little yeah, yeah. uh kind of hut there that they've got uh nairn not the most visually striking building but i love the setting there, kind of on the water uh big windows they have a fantastic bar out there uh um, they've got a great club history room they did a really good job yes, with their club do. history room yeah yep uh visby visby's on there as well it's more about the back porch than it is about the clubhouse itself i don't think there's anything even remotely remarkable about the clubhouse itself um and then i've got borrowing heads on there as well and um you know i'll throw i'll throw cow club on there too i love cow clubs clubhouse okay yeah good drive good drive into cow club yeah it's a good good entrance there uh i'm gonna go i like roll Hague. Um, I like their starter hut there. Um, I just, I think that's just a nice little, it's, it's very practical. It's simple. Is like that a clubhouse? Store. That's not part of the clubhouse though. Like no, if we're doing I like the little store other there. club the, structures, then we got to have clubhouse a- itself. I like the shutters. I've never seen shutters like that. It, it looks very um, low country ish. I, I don't know, but it does. And I like the story of the whole place. There's a, um, we can maybe post a link to the story of uh, well, about what went on there. But uh, is uh, Royal Hag where they where they prosecute the war criminals and Jackson uh, Mahomes no. and things of that no. nature? <laughs> Not. Um, they did have a war criminal living on property for a while, but that's a different story, um, and it's a good one. Um, so yeah, they they had to move the course, rebuilt it. Uh, they had a spy situation going on there uh, during the war. So uh, Royal Hag, really cool, uh, interesting backstories there. But I like the shutters there, and the people are very nice. Um, I played it once and uh, I mean, people just kind of came up and recognized that I didn't, you know, I wasn't a member there and Hey, what are you doing here? And Hey, great to you know, meet you. And I mean, not like a, Hey, what are you doing here? But a, you know, Hey, what brings you to yeah. our club? You know, they were happy to show it off. So I like that one. Uh, I like Milwaukee. Milwaukee's got a lot of good features too. They got the pro shop. That's one foot away from the front door. You can, you can hit a ball into the pro shop off of the uh, 18th fairway by accident. If you go along on the green, I like that part of it. The other thing I like at Milwaukee is their, their bathrooms uh, on the golf course. We'll show a picture here, but uh, that's really cool. Uh, Again, like this is really cool bathrooms they got. this is other ancillary structures. If we're talking it about, is. you know, favorite structures, like I'm, I'm going to say the the halfway house at National. Yeah, like, that's a good one. That, that one rules, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, but like structures, that's a totally different video, Wolfie. Quit right. cheating. We'll, we'll save that for another time. 
we'll save that for another time. All right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, Tron, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, you've got a term paper that's like a year overdue on Tom Simpson. Uh, Mr. Simpson, you check some books out of the library about Mr. Simpson. They haven't been returned yeah. in over a year. Just, just a heads a up there. Just a note that uh, the professor hasn't forgotten that uh, you've got overdue library books. Nor so. have I. I'm about halfway through it. I, okay. I, had, to, I had to put Keep it down. Keep um, okay. Well, v, I would be remiss if, you know, I feel like at some point we, we may need to do something on um, most ostentatious, over-the-top, worst clubhouses. We may have to do something on... Uh, clubs that were uh, like originally housing developments because I think that like uh, Yemen's would be on that list yeah. like there's some sure. surprising ones sure. there um, sure. yeah Not you know like what I was shocked Island. yeah I was shocked to see to see uh, some some omissions there you know I thought more Fontaine was certainly going to be on your list I thought Cyprus may have been on your list um, San Francisco golf things of that nature Sure. Newport well, Country Club. Com coming up on season two. We can talk about that. Uh, we can talk about that in uh, an upcoming episode. Well, thanks to everybody for tuning in to another episode of uh, Office Hours. Thanks to Holderness and Born for sponsoring. And we will uh, we'll see you guys in our next class. Mm -hmm.